basically I am hustling because it got dark on me last night I couldn't see so I figured I'd do it this morning that never works out but I'm really really hustling trying to get hadn't used a spinning rod all year so I'm to rig up a few of these suckers which is not fun me was an off day bad we might have to wacky rig them with the fat baby fat baby for me good morning sir I've been wondering where you were. You sleep in? I didn't sleep in. You, you, I got here before you did. Oh no, I've been here all week. How many ten pounders are gonna be caught today? I just need, I just need, I wanted just one ten today. Well, stage three, here we are. Lake Fork, legendary Lake Fork, home of giant bass and a thousand pot liquors. I have never seen as much fishing pressure as there is out here this week. Uh, I hate to say it, but I'm not a big fan of that. I like to fish where you got fresh fish. Not a lot of fresh fish here. They're well educated, but it is a great day to fish in the spring. You could not ask for better weather than we're having right now. Dead slick, drizzling rain, and then wanting to come to the bank on a full moon. There are giants swimming around everywhere. Like, you can cast at the bank and miss them by 10 foot. I mean, they are like in the dirt, shallow too. I hear people talk about, oh, I shook this big one off in practice. It was on the bed and then I went back, couldn't catch it. It's like calling up a turkey and not killing it. You educate him when you do that, so that makes him a lot harder to call in the next time. I would watch him get up, get it to bite, and hand a rod to his client. His client would miss it every time. I'm like, oh gosh, <laughs> that is terrible. Sir, Macro! Fishing for Academy, that's gonna be Greg Hackney. Jeff Sprague. Two and a half pounder. Two pounds, eight ounces. Two and a half pounder. You knew what it weighed before you even hit it. With the... <laughs> Just ounces <laughs> off. He said two and a half and it was two eight. He was dead on. First time ever on my home body of water um, to fish a major event. The fish have really come in, which took away any advantage that I might have had, I felt like. So I think if the weather cooperates, it's gonna be just a slug fest like what you saw today. They're gonna continue the rest of the week. Beyond my wildest dreams that I ever think I'd be a you know a little kid out here fishing off the bank and in a John boat to come out here and fish to be doing what we're doing right now. So pretty emotional, pretty, pretty awesome. And no matter how this thing plays out, I am blessed to be here and uh, to show off the fishery that we have. I tried to boat slip a three and a half pounder in the last 10 minutes. You can do that. No, you can't because they come off midair. The wireless customer you are calling is not available. We are sitting, I think, in 15th. Not where I wanted to be. The weather made me had to have to go to plan B. I'm throwing a, a swing head a lot on a, with a Strike King Rage Bug. I've got a few places that's got some fish that are staged up. I've just got to go either find some new fish if the wind keeps blowing like this 
or make the most out of plan B. Well, I'm just trying to decide uh, where I want to go first still. I'm, ha I'm torn between two areas <laughs> and they're far apart, as always, you know. As always, why would you expect them to not be? It's gonna be a mess today. With it being a Saturday and there's lots of tournaments and stuff, thinking I'm gonna try something a little bit different. You know, your first decision is an important one. I, it's killed me because I got two places that I really wanna be in two totally separate patterns that, um, that are working. You know, with a 10 o'clock start, it's not like you can get to someplace early and, and, and get to them. So everything you're gonna fish, is I don't care where it's at here, it's gonna have boats around it. Just trying to make the right uh, right decision to begin with. I, I know the sure thing is the, the shallow bite with everybody else and it's just that's just what it is. So not knowing exactly how to run through some of the areas like local guys and things like that is a factor because time is time is of the essence when you're in all this timber. Good. I see y'all brought the, I brought the boss with you too. Hey, Morning, how are you, sir? <laughs> All right. So, from the cup. Oh my goodness. That is, man. That's, I don't even know what to say. That's, <laughs> that's, that's pretty special. That's incredible. Where did you guys get that? You did not have to do that. That is awesome. I have a, I have an awesome place, perfect for these right down the street you guys did not have to do that thank you so much i am taking these with me i promise you you don't understand guys you you don't understand that's so awesome do you got android or iphone iphone i need to get my phone put on there let me get my phone work i hate technology double click double click hey you got it recognize my face Anna just told me he caught a snake and he has it. I'm going to kill him. Oh, <laughs> my nephew caught a snake. Multitasking. So I absolutely killed something at Okeechobee. Bent my prop shaft. I was hoping I didn't. Now we got to get a new lower unit put on. And while we do that, I'm going to do some tackling. Need to get it done. Got a few spinning rods to do, which takes me like forever. <laughs> takes me a while. You know, at Lake Fork, it's springtime, things are changing, um, conditions change. And when we got here, water temperature was 58. The last day of practice I saw up in the 60s. You know what that, you know what's happening then. Uh, before I came to the lake, I wasn't hearing a lot about spawning fish here. And so you know that during, I mean, it's muggy out here right now. There's pollen on my cover this morning. When that happens, the fish are coming. It's a big wave of fish, because this is a huge body of water. I knew that I needed to get on the bank the second day of practice, and I'm glad I did. I found a few fish, and I feel like I found where the fish were going to. That's always what you want to find in a, in a, uh, in a tournament situation. You don't want to be hung up on where the fish are leaving. You want to be always thinking ahead of the fish because I'm here a week, eight days, and things change in eight days, especially in the spring and in the fall. Midsummer time, if I find a school of fit, you know, if it's late May, nothing's going to change in that eight days. But in a big body of water like this, you've got to be on the move. You got to stay up with the current conditions. So always stay with ahead of the fish and the current conditions. Settling in 11th place, 15 pounds, 15 ounces out of first. Kevin Van Dam is 10th. He's got eight scorable bass. What's working for KVD today, JC? You start. <laughs> he's actually caught a few on a frog, but most of them have come flipping, and he said he's really trying to target areas where he can put his bait nice that most of the recreational like anglers that. out there on Lake Fork are not. In a decent spot after the, after the day. It was a lot different than I thought. Um, 
you know, I, my first stop, I, I never can start in the right area, but I, you know, I, I bounced back good and just grounded out and got a few bites anyway. Learning experience for sure. Every day is out there and, uh, but I feel good about, you know, figuring out what I did figure out because it was very different than practice for me. So, you know, go to Lake Athens tomorrow, do some practice for there, hopefully make it to the championship round and see what we can't do in the, the next day. The weather's, weather's gonna change a little bit. These, these bass are tricky with Florida strains. So but right now it's been a long day and we'll go get something to eat. Typically, our normal routine is I cook in a crock pot during practice. Because during practice, we fish till dark, so we don't have an opportunity, you know, it'd be so late to eat. So I, we, we cowboy bean, typically always the first day of practice, I cook gumbo in a crock pot on the second day. And so tomorrow night, we will, we probably gonna have some fried backstrap, mashed potatoes and gravy. That's a normal meal for us. We uh, we live pretty high on the hog, you know, here on the on Major League Fishing. <laughs> what? Oh my God, me. I don't know who it is. I'm gonna find out. I'll, I'll be honest with you, like when I go crappie fishing, it's like bluegill fishing. I got to catch them every cast. Like I can't. I can go out there and fish all day for two or three bass bites. I'm fishing for anything else. They got to be biting. Well, the big thing is we got to have. You can't have fish or deer meat without a little Louisiana hot sauce. I'll see you on the flip side. All right. See you in the morning. He gone. I'll be in here in the morning, probably wake you up about five o'clock. That's fine. But welcome. This is our church uh, for Major League Fishing, for the cameramen, the families, the fishermen, the boat officials, uh, staff. We all go to churches uh, all over the country and different churches, our home churches. But when we're on the road, this is our church, and we're just gonna put first things first on Sunday morning and. Uh, and honor God. Worship with us. Alton Jones. Good. Thank you, Mark. And uh, thank you all, all for being here this morning as we just take a minute to focus on what's really important. He who believes in me will not thirst. It's a verse that many of us are familiar with. We thank you for all these things and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Alton. I slept pretty good. I was sleeping in my own bed, nice for a change, I can tell you that. So, uh, this, like I said, this is the first time we've ever got to do that. And uh, I could get used to it. So if we want to come on back down here to Lake Fork every year, that'd be ours. Right. How you doing, brother? Good, good, good to good, see good, you. Good, man. good to see you, man. Yeah, we, uh, it's going to be a little, little, inter little different today, but we're still going to see them turn out. They're gonna, oh, yeah. They're gonna, we're going to tee off on them. Your local law enforcement is your best friend, not just because you speed and they get you out of tickets. Listen, these are the people that watch your trucks and your boats while you're at the, at the lake. They drive through. Being former law enforcement myself, great rule of thumb to befriend them. And, uh, you know, they're in your community. And that's what people don't realize is the same guys are in your community. They see the same people you do. They see you. And, uh, you know, they got families too. So, really good guys. Really good guys. There you go. Mark Rose. What's your name? Nice to meet you, brother. There you go. Morning prayer will be led by angler Annie Montgomery, followed by the national anthem. Lord, we ask a special blessing on all our anglers. Keep us safe. Keep all the officials safe as we go out on the water, Lord. And, and just to remember that, God, you sent your son Jesus to die for us. Cold this morning. We didn't expect this. I ain't even got all my clothes. Some of them's at home. I asked my wife last night. I'm like, hey, babe, where's my wind pants? I'm hanging in the laundry room. Once you start fishing, you'll forget how cold it is. Representing Academy Outdoors, we're talking Mr. Greg Hackney, recently named a Major League Fishing Cup champion. Representing Bass Cat and Mercury, Jeff Spray. Fishers of Men National Tournament Trail, glad to have this angler on board. Currently sitting in 15th, it's Andy Montgomery. Two pounds, six ounces, just a little hammer stud. Boat to boat, we check in with Mark Rose. That's a 211 for Mark Rose. He stays up in the top 20. I don't think he gets enough credit where he deserves as far as a shallow water fisherman. I mean, he, he's a Mississippi River rat. 
Look there. Looky there. Oh, that'll be a fish landing violation. How hard was that? See? All that for you. Chip round. Consistent pattern here for Sprague. Eagle catch. There's a good one. That's a big one, boys. Look at there. Look at that hammer. Blind casting two six pounders a day. There you go, baby. All right. Trim her up for me. Thank you, sir. It, you know what it just didn't work out uh the fishing you know was obviously off and you can tell by the weights for everybody but the good thing is is we got the warm weather moving back in tomorrow and the next day and it's going to get really good again so that's all good we, we're going back after them again so we get one more round ah. hey hurry my baby because he's in a hurry no i ain't in no hurry y'all come on how did you do i made it <laughs> great because i never caught a score one practice I've seen a handful, like three or four on the bed. That's all I had after practice. So I didn't know how I was going to catch one the first two days. I don't know how I'm going to catch one in the knockout round. But it worked out for two days. Maybe it'll work out again. Pretty excited right now. If I made it. Now, you want to see a totally emotional change? Let them tell me I finished 21st. Because right now, I'm pumped. All of a sudden, ding. And I had some sticks in between me and it, and I could... I mean, it was a big and come up. I knew that was the fish. I got it over a limb, got it over another limb, got it over another limb, swam by the boat. I bear hugged it and I screamed so loud. Every crow came out of the trees. There was an eagle that kind of went. It was an exciting fish. As you can tell, I'm pretty pumped up. I'm not an emotional guy, but I'm pretty pumped up if I made it. So I'm looking forward to having an opportunity to go back out if I have the opportunity. Thank you, Jesus. Get my little worm on all that tree. Catch that other one, just like that. Same deal, boy, I reeled down and when I did, I was like, oh, I got the big one. And this afternoon, when I finally decided I couldn't catch first place, I didn't want to burn anymore. And I, you know, I was able to spend the first last two and a half hours just practicing. Really my key bait, the, this really seems to what those fish want. That's a strike, strike king game hog. And this is the small one. This is a great, Great lake, it's got a lot of big fish in it, but it's a highly pressured lake. You know, it gets a lot of fishing pressure because it's so good. It seems to be smaller baits really seem to be better than big baits right now. Finished today. You know, now it's time to get some rest and uh, tomorrow I'll probably go over to Lake Athens and look around a little bit for a couple hours, just ride around. And but I'm gonna sleep late. That's one thing I do. I, I make sure to make the most of my day off. But uh, probably get a bite to eat and uh, I'll see y'all tomorrow. And the door's locked. <laughs> Can't get in. day we're getting ready to go to Lake Athens to practice for the uh, championship round in case we were to make it coming by getting a little bit of maintenance done now this is our pit crew these guys uh, come rain sleet or shine they're here working on our stuff I got my boy Duke Jinkle back there working on my jack plate for me a couple minor things and then I'm off to uh, off to the races at Lake Athens enjoying this beautiful spring day of rain Great state, ain't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. If you knock that on my carpet, you and I will have words. Throw that thing away, man. All right, we're off to Lake Athens. We're gonna go join Andy. Get a few hours of practice in. He probably ain't practicing. He's probably telling jokes to everybody on the lake. Midday. Midday? Yeah, whatever. We're on Lake Athens, which is right beside the Texas uh, hatchery, really. Uh, it's supposed to be a tremendous lake. This is our off day, so we get to come down here um, and actually practice this year, which I don't know how, I don't, I don't really like.
like that myself. We get six hours a day to ride around Lake Athens. It's a small lake. It's supposed to be a really good lake. I see some fish on bed, so definitely some spawning going on. The water's warmer here, actually warmer here than it is at Lake Fort, probably because it's such a small lake. But still, this is a great lake. They're going to bust them. I hope I'm a part of that busting. Plastics have really been, you know, the deal. And uh, this deal right here, the vault, this is the envy of all the major league fishing competitors because that is the best collection right there of Strike King soft plastics known to mankind. I mean, I got it like a rodent, a rage bug, a game hog, whatever you need, I got it. I'm almost like a drug dealer. You know what I mean? Like I could just roll up in the parking lot and just roll this out and I probably wouldn't have to fish for a living. I mean, because I got it. Well, typically it's how I order my tackle or how I, you know, get, you know, get what I need. I look at our events, where we're going, the time of the year, and that gives me a pretty good idea of what I need to carry. Like I pretty much knew here, this was gonna be a pre-spawn deal or a spawn. By day two, that's when I was pretty much locked into the spawn deal and then I just spent all my time looking for spawners. Well, I'm checking score tracker. You know, we're allowed to look at that. We can't look at any video or pictures or whatever, but we can look and see, uh, you know, see what the guys are catching. And uh, there he is, 15th place, Kevin Van Dam, 46 pounds and eight ounces. Lane, you're ending there. You know, today was a, a really tough day. You know, I went to the area, the best area that I had the other day, and um, you know, I caught one this morning. It's the only bite that I had, and I could just tell the things had changed. It, it just, uh, I couldn't make it happen. You know, it uh, it just did not work. I guess those fish had that were staging out there went all the way to the bank. I, you know, I caught uh, half a dozen little ones, but just one of those things, you know, I, I knew I had to um, do something to, to catch something or try to make something happen there at the end and it, it didn't work out. So it's just one of those deals that, you know, you, you try to make the best decisions and uh, <laughs> you don't always work. I don't feel real good about it right now. No for knockout rounds and zero and two right now for championship. I'll be honest with you, I feel like everywhere sets up for my strong suits. I mean, I've been doing this. I don't, it, it, the lake is kind of irrelevant, you know what I mean? Today I'm gonna have to catch 15 bats, you know, but it, and if they average three and three quarters, you know, I'm getting better than 60 pounds. But it's gonna be hard. Like that. Look, yeah. Close, close, and more close, just in case we get wet. We're gonna have to readjust our game plan, just basically go look for some new ones. Otherwise, all those old fish are just gonna be beat to death and we're not gonna have anything to, to fish for. So, we got our work cut out for us today. It's not gonna be just a, we know where we're going and we know what we're gonna do because we don't know where we're going and we don't know what we're gonna do. I used to make this when they quit making them. That was my favorite, but that's the same lens. Now I got my two pack. 
How am I feeling? Uh, uh, I don't know. I'm guessing 35, 40 pounds to make it. Wait, zero, top eight. That's all we got to do is top eight. Got a good night's rest. I've only got, I don't know how many I got to beat today. 32 of the best fishermen in the world I got to beat. You know, it's a piece of cake. Just another day at the office. Former FLW Angler of the Year, gonna be Mark Rose. A former Major League Fishing World Champion, Rick Hackney. One spot behind him is Mark Rose now. Mark has three scorable bass. He's at 10 pounds, 11 ounces for the day. He has a pair of four pounders, a 4.3 and a 4.1. And he's only two pounds, nine ounces out of the top eight. Again, this might be it. This part of that's on. Mm. And then I broke one off, went back and caught it. <laughs> Consistency is the whole deal, is the livelihood of this sport, and I've had a very consistent career, and so. It's, it's, it's hard, you know what I mean? Like it mentally, it, it's hard, but I'm like, you know what, it was still, it was still a good term for a tough bunch of guys. I mean, they are, they are the best. And uh, I just gotta keep punching at them. And finally I'll seal the deal. I won. Somehow, some way, practice, I caught zero scoreable bass. Biggest key for me is I had an area to myself, which is unheard of on Lake Fork. I've looked at every single fish I've caught. I hope it rains tomorrow. So I do not have to look at another one because I'm tired of sight fishing. What a grind, to be honest with you. Um, for this event, you know, knowledge of the lake did help me and it paid off a little bit this afternoon. You know, we had um, 53 minutes left, I think, in the day. Ultimately caught those last two or three fish that I caught one I thought, man, that'll be enough. And then um, it wasn't. He's like, oh, you caught a two and a half and Someone caught a four pounder, and now you're in, you know, ninth. And I was like, oh no. And so I knew I had to go, and I went maybe 50 yards, and there was another uh, three and a half pounder there. So, um, man, I was just blessed. I mean, two top tens in a row, uh, and on my home lake, it means, it means uh, more to me than you can imagine. We had a rough start to the day. Um, I hit a, it was raining so hard I couldn't see get out of my house. I hit a sign, um, busted the tire, had to change the flat tire in the pouring down rain. Tyler just showed up because apparently he was stuck in his yard. So, not been a great first period. We are in fourth place for some reason. I feel like I'm in last. I started in a decent area. Should have never left, but I did leave. So we're gonna go back in there in a little bit and see if we can catch back up. 
getting too far away from the lead and I don't like it. Happy I'm caught one and I'm mad at the same time. It's almost three pounds worth. It's a big and Sprague hooked up. Andy Montgomery won the knockout round yesterday in Lake Fork. He's in seventh place today in our championship. Mm. At the boat pain. Should have lifted him. You can stick a fork in it. Lake Fork will be remembered for Ot Defoe defeating them all and winning stage three on the Bass Pro Tour. Let's enjoy the final 30 seconds of his first ever Bass Pro Tour Championship. The day was what it was. I really wanted to catch him just fishing, not bad fishing. That didn't work out. You make the championship and then you don't do good that day, you kind of feel down, like you lost the whole turn. But you didn't. You finished eighth overall, so it's all good. Did you straighten him out, Poche? Why can't I catch him? It ticks me off. What'd you catch him on back there? Format's cool, though. Less boats on the water every day. Zero you out. But most of the time when you back your boat in the water, especially with every fish counts, you got a chance, man. That's so cool. Yeah, so got a little virus going around. We don't know what's going to happen stage four. Um, we out, man. Going to South Carolina. Let me, let me do this. Let me have these back. Okay, because that would, I'm not taking away, I promise. I'm going to make it official like again. That way, pretty when she gets the strike king, right? Okay. And then you guys get to lose. Lose. And then I'll sign this on the back, even though he beat me today, okay? We're still friends. Good to meet all three of you guys. Thanks for coming out. Look, Thrift signed that Huck shirt. Look at him go. He ruined that thing. What y'all doing? Y'all just, what did he just go sign crazy? Yeah. You gotta watch old Thrifty. I'm telling you, when he gets in autograph mode, you'll, he'll, he'll lose it. You know what I mean? Like he just starts signing to everybody. So that being said, you know, what a great week. Uh, Lake Fork really showed out. Athens ultimately didn't show out that much. And I think the reason Athens didn't show out is because we were in between waves. A lot of fish are done spawning. There's still some fish to come. The water temperature was really warm. This lake's small, full of grass, so it went really early. Um, and, but congratulations to Ott. What a hammer, man. He caught a big one and just put, put a clinic on. It sounded like in the last 45 minutes or an hour, I didn't get to see it because I was trying to catch my one or two measly bass. But, uh, you know, we've had a great event here, back-to-back uh, -back top tens, and, um, you know, we're setting good in the points. Just, just a great way to keep the season rolling. Truly hope that this coronavirus deal passes us by and that we're able to, you know, continue on with our events and get, um, get, get the next event underway in Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm not so sure that's gonna happen, but uh, just never could get it going. So look forward to Raleigh, North Carolina, getting on the road again, um, getting this one behind us and getting another one in our face. That's what it's all about. So we'll see you guys down the trail.